the Splinterlands blockchain-based game is never, ever going to solve the bot problem. Here's why, and also why it's not really that big of a deal. Hey everyone, and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist, and in today's video, we are talking all about the problem of bots in Splinterlands. Now, right at the start of the video, I want to be very clear. This is not a financial advice video. It's not an investing video. I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't invest or play Splinterlands. I'm simply here to talk about a game that I enjoy playing. Specifically, I want to talk about the problem of bots in the game. My central thesis in this video is that we will never fix the bot problem, but we can completely destroy the game by trying. Now, what do I mean by this? I have seen countless proposals about how to fix the problem of bot exploitation, right? And I want to just go through a very brief history of these so that you can see how futile they've been, but also the damaging effect that they've had on the game. So, if we go all the way back to the beginning, the early days of Splinterlands, you paid your $10, you started playing, and however many battles you could win, that determined your reward. If you could take your starter cards into a gold, into a silver level, and win there, you would get gold and silver level rewards. Your ability to earn was a function of your ability to know the game, to know the cards, how they worked, and to beat your opponent. And then they said, hey, here's the deal. You're getting all these rewards with only a $10 investment. We need you to have this thing called collection power, right? So we don't care what cards you buy. As long as you buy enough collection power, you can get into a certain league and you can earn those rewards. We don't care if you are the perfect player, if you're winning 100% of your matches with the starter cards, we will not give you the higher level rewards until you kind of pay us more, right? Until you invest more in these cards, right? And the theory here is, well, it's going to impose a cost for the bots, so they're not going to exploit the system. And people tend to think, oh, that's a good idea. We want to prohibit bots, right? We want to make it more costly for bots. We want people to be able to earn, but not to exploit the game. And here's the issue. You're going to find this as we go through all of these examples. The only solution that the team can come up with for fighting bots is to make the game more expensive to play. That is their only solution. And again, I'm not criticizing the team. I'm trying to point out why I think this is a losing strategy. So let's just go through a couple more examples. So we had collection power and then, okay, so you went out, you bought however many hundred dollars worth of cards to get the appropriate collection power. You're winning your matches and then they say, Hey, by the way, starter cards, if you use a starter card, which you paid $10 for, because that was part of the deal when you got your spell book, now your rewards are going to be decreased by the percentage of starter cards that you used. Okay, no problem, you say. I'll go buy these starter cards. Again, you putting more money into the game. You've got your starter cards, you've got your collection power, and now they say, hey, we know you're getting rewards, but, but, here's the kicker. We don't just want you to own the card, but you need to own multiple copies of the card to make it to a certain level. We can't just have you winning in gold with a level one unicorn Mustang. You need a level however much, right? So you've got to have multiple copies of the same card, even if you're already winning. Pay us more money so you can get your reward, right? And now I'm hearing this stuff about, well, we need a battle pass, right? The idea is, hey, you pay $2 per season so that you can earn rewards. And again, I want to be very clear here. People that are proposing this, I genuinely believe they have the interest of the game at heart. I was listening to a video last week. I know I'm a little bit late on this. I don't remember who it was, but they were saying, hey, if we have a $2 battle pass per season, that is going to be insanely expensive for a bot farm, right? Because they have a thousand bots times two bucks. That's $2,000. Whereas just an average player, it's going to cost them two bucks. Not a huge deal. However, this is my key argument. This is my main premise here. Anything that you do to the game that's going to discourage bots, it's going to only have one effect. Either the game will be profitable or it will not be profitable. 
It's as simple as that. If something is profitable for an individual player, for an individual account, that can be scaled up indefinitely, right? So it's not something to where we're going to come up with some financial incentive that makes the game unprofitable for bots, but profitable for humans. The only lever that the team has, and we've seen this through all of these different proposals, is to make the game less profitable, right? And that's great if your goal is to discourage bots, right? We're going to just completely make the game unprofitable. You're going to have to pay us more and more money to get less and less rewards. Sure, you'll drive out the bots, but then what are the players getting out of it? Now, on the flip side, if you say, hey, bots are going to come in. They're going to be able to earn rewards. They're going to be able to profit from the system. It will likewise be profitable for the players. And short of doing KYC, short of verifying that every player is an actual human, I don't see a way around this. Everyone that says, oh, well, you're going to even SPS staking, right? Oh, you have to stake so much SPS on your account to be able to earn. Again, it's the same story over and over under a different name. We're going to make it cost more to play with less rewards. And again, maybe that's great. Maybe that's what the game needs. But at the end of the day, if it is profitable for you as a player to play the game, even with SPS staking, even with having to get higher level cards to play, even with collection power, right? Even with all of these things, if it is still profitable for you as an individual, it is going to be just as profitable for a bot farm to scale that up, right? Maybe an individual player is making a net profit of 10 cents on their account per week, right? Just I'm just throwing out a number. Okay, that's still 10 cents net per account. 10 cents net profit on one account versus 10 cents net profit on a thousand accounts. I'm still making a profit on those 1,000 accounts. And you might say, well, the profit margin is so small that the bot farms aren't going to do it. What else are the bot farms going to do? They literally have nothing to do. Bots play continuously, 24-7. They don't get tired, right? So in my opinion, and again, this is not me criticizing the game. I'm just trying to illustrate how I think this is a relatively futile approach. The bot is always going to benefit from something that encourages you to play more, right? The bot can play indefinitely. Humans have to go to work. They have families. They have stuff they have to do. Anything that relies on you having to play more is inherently going to benefit the bots. And I said this when they were thinking about soulbound rewards. You're seeing that now, right? You're going up against bots that have these soulbound rewards and you don't have them as a player, right? So this is something that I kind of talked about previously. So what is the solution then, right? Because I don't want to just sound like a complainer. My argument is that we've got to let the bots do what they're going to do. I want you to think back two years ago, if you were in Splinterlands that long ago, or even a year ago, when the rules were generally stable, right? How many times have we seen the team go back and try and go back on their word or redo something in the past year or two just because they're trying to completely micromanage this economy? And here's the thing. They're saying, we don't want to ban bots, right? We don't want to do KYC because we want an open economy where it's decentralized, where it's all of these things. When you change the rules every two weeks or every month, you are doing far more harm to the trust that the players have in the game, in your ability to manage the game, than you are by just saying, hey, we're going to let bots run wild. If they make some money, they make some money, right? So my thing, and again, I know I've said this before, but my key thing is make the game fun to play, right? Because here's the thing, you can keep having players invest more and more and more and try and extract every little penny you can in the name of fighting bots. But if I'm a new player, I'm sitting on the sidelines and I say, okay, I've got to buy a $10 spell book, but that doesn't really count because now I've got to buy my cards and I've got to buy a certain level of cards. And even once I have those cards, now I need to go buy SPS to stake on my account. And even after I do all that, well, the rewards that I'm getting I can't really sell them because there's no liquid rewards anymore. I'm going to sit out, right? The most important thing for getting new players is having a fun, interesting, exciting game. And I think the vibrant community that we have is definitely a part of that as well. The community is a huge aspect for me as a Splinterlands player. So think back to the game itself. What has changed about the game? I'm not talking about the reward system. I'm talking about the actual game in the past two years. How has it changed to entice new players to come in? 
we still have essentially the same gameplay structure. We added some background music. Okay, right? Um, that's cool, right? The background music is awesome. I like it. It enhances the mood, right? But it doesn't take this to a game that a new player is going to be like, oh my goodness, I want to jump in and play this. The gameplay is essentially the same. We don't have these spells, right, that we were going to get that kind of shake things up. You're doing very small incremental changes that aren't really going to pull new players in. And who cares about the rewards, right? At this point, you're nerfing the rewards so much that you've got to have a fun game to play. And just look at all the free-to-play games on the internet, even something like MTG Arena, right? I do not make a single penny playing that game, but it is much more fun, it is much more enjoyable for me to play at this point than Splinterlands, and that is something that hurts me to say because I love the idea of NFT technology, I love the idea of play to earn, I love blockchain, but if I'm looking at this, MTG Arena, I'm going to go, I'm going to play, I'm going to have some fun. I earn cards in that game, but I can't sell them, so they have no monetary value, but people still play. People come to MTG. I know I'm a little bit of a cheapskate, so I don't spend money in the game. I don't put money into it, but lots of other people do. It is a major money maker for Hasbro, for MTG, and again, that's a free product where you can kind of do the upselling if you want. So that's my key premise. Players want fun gameplay and they want a stable environment. We are not giving them either by focusing on bots, right? In my opinion, the team is doing so much to fight bots without right banning them that it's just so counterintuitive to me. You're trying to have this fair and open and decentralized ecosystem, but you're literally changing it every month trying to fight bots. You're not banning the bots. The bots are still there stronger than ever. Um, so you're not winning the fight, but you're alienating your player base. Let the bots do what they're going to do. Make the game fun. Make the game enjoyable. And here's one more thing. With MTG Arena, with these other free-to-play games, here's the big difference. People are going to say, well, you can play Splinterlands, right? You can play Splinterlands, and you just won't get rewards, right? But here's the thing. Because Splinterlands is play-to-earn, I can't really enjoy the game without sinking money into it, right? Because we all know, yeah, you can play with the ghost cards, with the starter cards, but you're not going to win any matches unless you at least go out and rent some legendaries, some epics, right? And at that point, if you're just going in and losing every match, where's the fun in that? With something like MTG Arena, I can go, I can play, I can have fun. I don't spend any money, I don't lose any money. If I want to invest more, I can, but it's not a requirement. The thing that I think is really hurting Splinterlands right now, you have to pay money to even enjoy the game, right? It's uh, pay to play at this point, right? If we had a mode maybe where, hey, you are not going to get any rewards, right? This is a complete trainer mode or something like that. You have access to all the cards. It's just fun. It's just enjoyable. You are not going to get anything whatsoever out of this other than playing the game and being a part of the community. I think people might like that. I think that would be a great new player experience. Let's create a free-to-play, a real free-to-play version, right? Not like we currently have, where you have access to good cards, where you can, maybe you can even earn uh, ghost cards of legendaries, of epics, right? Of these cool things that you can play and enjoy the game and actually have fun instead of getting completely stomped every single match. So just my thoughts. I want to be very clear. I do like Splinterlands. It's a game that I've played for many, many years. It's something, the technology behind it, the rental card market, all of these things are absolutely amazing. And I want to see this game develop, not just for the gameplay, but for the awesome technology that it's really a leader in putting out there, right? And I know other Splinterlands players might disagree with my proposals, but at the end of the day, I really do think every Splinterlands content creator that I watch I know we have different ideas, different proposals, but I really think we're trying to make this game great, right? We're trying to help build this game because it is something that we care about. So I do appreciate you watching. If you have any of your own Splinterlands proposals, I would love to see those as well. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.